Hey folks, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favourite miniature war games, Super System, uh, by Scott Pyle and David Lewis. It's a uh, relatively scale free, although it works better with 28 or 15 mil miniatures. Uh, skirmish superhero game as the name and the front cover with a bionic ape fighting supervillains would indicate. I really like this game, it's got a lot of flexibility, it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, for those that have seen my blog, I'm clearly super, really into superheroes. Um, the, the core mechanic's really good, although it can get bogged down with more characters, but you know, sort of five aside works really well and I think that's a good number. Uh, the problem a lot of people have with getting into it, the character creation can be quite uh, intimidating because there's a lot of options and uh, the book doesn't do a brilliant job of explaining how to get into it. So I thought I'd just do a quick little video on how to set up a couple of characters to get people going. Uh, apologies if the editing's really choppy because I'm just going to cut out any bit where I'm sort of umming and ahhing over what powers to give someone. I think the problem a lot of people have with the game is they the first time they do a superhero they want to do somebody really complicated. So a character like, uh, say, Spider-Man, he's actually really tricky because he's got he's strong, he's agile, he's fairly quick, he's got the web slinging, he's got the spider sense, he's okay in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's a lot to sort of fit into the one character. Same with Batman. I mean, Batman, depending on which version of Batman you want to do, like he's got a million gadgets, explosives, he can disappear, he can climb things, he can glide. That's a lot to do. So you're actually better off starting out with someone easy. A character like Wolverine, for example, he's agile, he's tough, he regenerates, he has claws. Really easy to do. Uh, even uh, someone like Green Arrow, he shoots arrows and he's got a couple of different weapon options and he's okay in a fist fight. That's all, you know, that's pretty easy to do. Now, a good way to get started is there are some example characters in the book. sort of from page 102 onwards. Uh, these ones are set up to be 75 points, which is sort of the recommended starting point for a character. I personally find, unless you're going to do a campaign, an 85 point character works a little bit better. It just gives you more options to go with. So what we're going to do today is I've just pulled a couple of figures out of my collection that I haven't done the stats for yet. And as you can see, I've just got a workbook, a calculator, and the rule book. That's all I really need. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one I painted up. This is a uh, crossover figure, so made more or less specifically for Super System. I uh, see she's got little claws. I did her in a trench coat, did a trench coat sort of a neutral color because I thought it was a little bit 90s image comic style without all the pouches. Okay, so I need. So we're going to call her, I don't know, call her Lynx because she's got claws. I can always change that later. Okay, so there's seven main stats. Strike. Strength. Dodge. Toughness. Mind. Resolve and sense. Alright, now I want her to be a little bit of a brawler. She gets in, she fights a bunch of guys. So I'm probably going to need more of the physical stats than the mental stats. Now if I want to make it a bit easy for myself, let's have a look at, you know, what sort of the base brawler is. Okay, strike 8, strength 4, dodge 7, low mines, resolve and strength, average toughness. That's pretty good. And these packages here, it's like, okay, so this guy has a lot of gadget pulls and can climb. So yeah, that's kind of your Batman style character, not really what I want. Oh, this person has some re-rolls. That's pretty good. Uh, this guy has claws, regeneration, and extra toughness. And this guy can sling his shield around. Okay, cool. So maybe, and he's a bit of a leader character. So nothing I really want there. But I do like the idea of a high strike, so let's go with that. Let's say she's strike 7, because then I still get some advantage from dice pull modifiers, which are usually around plus 2 or something like that. 
because of course there's an 85 point character she'll cap out at 9 dice on most things uh, strength, yeah, 4 is a pretty good number dodge, 7 as well I think toughness, well I don't want her to be that much tougher than a normal human so I might make that sort of yeah, 4 is pretty good mind to resolve, I'll probably put up to 4 because a lot of the time the goal ro roll uh, the goal roll for resolve is four, so trying to get four goals on less than four dice is a bit tricky. And sense, I wouldn't mind her having. Actually, she's just mostly normal humans. So let's make that three. All right. So the to work out how many points the traits cost, because you get one point in each, and then that's two two points from there. It's really easy. Add them all together. Minus seven times that number by two, I've got 48. Okay, so I'll just make a note of that there. Okay, so for those keeping score at home, I now have 37 points with which to buy powers. That's pretty easy. I think I know what I want to do for her. Something to keep in mind is that if your dice are too high, you pretty much have to buy levels in super, but you can buy levels in super over, uh, under that rather. Super's good, it gives you a re-roll, so if you've got five dice in strike with one point in super, you roll your five dice, you can re-roll one of them. As usual, you can't re-roll a re-roll and you have to accept the second result. As you can see, Lynx has seven in two stats, and you probably can't see that very well, sorry, because of my handwriting. It means she needs to have at least one point in super in each of these. Now, let's see, I'm 48. Now I know levels of super, because I've made literally dozens of characters for this, will cost me four points per level and I can have a max of five. So I'd like her to have super dodge of one. Just have to make a note of that too. So that adds four. And I'm going to make her super strike two, because that's what she does. She hits things in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so super strike two plus eight all right so i'm already up to 60 points which leaves me 15 left as she's a brawler that's actually okay she doesn't need a lot of high-tech powers i like, can really not going to give a close combat character you know psychic powers or that sort of thing it's just it's you can't you're not specializing there you're going too far off to either side Okay, so what might I like to give her? Okay, because she's a brawler, I probably want to give her combat reflexes, letting her move out of combat a bit quicker. So, combat reflexes. Which cost me two points. And I think I'll give her the ricochet ability, which lets her bounce in and out of combat. So she's running from combat to combat, tearing people up, and if she gets somewhere disadvantageous, she can get out of there. So, ricochet. Which is another two points. Okay, with the claws, I think Lynx is going to be good at getting around, so I might give her the climbing ability for three points. Now, it's, I can buy the option here for vertical charge, which means she can just run straight up walls. That's not really what I'm going for. That's a bit more sort of, you know, Barry Allen Spider-Man, so I'm not really going to do that one. Because I want Lynx to be good in a fight, I'm going to buy her the extra attacks ability, which lets me flurry, which is basically making multiple melee attacks, which you can't normally do for cheaper. That's another two points. As you can see with the sort of more more human style characters, you're buying lower cost powers because she's not transforming into anything or firing bolts of mental energy or turning into living flame or anything like that. I think I'll give her Super Leap to help her get around as well, which uh, I usually, it doesn't expressly say in the book, but I usually play if you Super Leap onto a surface with climbing that's okay, like Spider-Man leaping up onto, the bu onto a building or Beast or one of those sort of characters. So that's another six points, which means I have ten left. Now the problem with Super Leap in 4th edition over the previous 3rd edition is it always runs on your strength, where it used to be able to run on your agility 
instead, which I don't super like because um, whilst it makes sense for characters like the Hulk, again, for characters like, say, Beast or Vixen, it, they don't get to leap as far as they used to, which, yeah, is a li little bit less fun, but oh well. You can still... Uh, movement in Super System is very fluid anyway, so she's still going to get around fairly quickly, I think. Now, she's not very strong at strength 4, so what I'm going to do is buy the weapon ability, which lets your character do more damage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's a really good ability if you've got a character who's holding a weapon, or like, say, has Wolverine claws, or has something that will increase the damage they do in melee combat without necessarily making them stronger and tougher. This means I find I'm more often than not buying the uh, No Grabs edition as well, because uh, if someone's got a magical sword, it's hard to kind of like pin and grab someone with the magical sword. Think uh, Black Knight or Shining Knight. Now, there's a variable cost on this. Now, she's strength 4. I'd like her to do at least strength 7 damage. So it's plus three dice, so that's five points. Okay, so weapon plus three dice. All right, that leaves me with five points. Now, a lot of the time with characters, you'll consider giving them a bane. Which reduces, the, which reduces their overall cost, or you might consider giving them a boon, which increases their, their cost, and obviously banes limit your character's effectiveness, boons increase your character's effectiveness. Uh, a lot of people I find don't use these, or at least at my local club. This is a shame because some of the stuff like Amphibious is really good if you're doing an Aquaman or Namor style character even though you're not going to be playing a super system game on a table with a lot of water a lot of the time, it's good to keep in mind. You can get extra health. Uh, Solus is a really good one, actually, if you're doing, say, a robot character like Atomic Robo or um, Machine Man, who's going to be, uh, who's not going to be vulnerable to psychic attacks and that sort of thing, but they a bit makes them a bit easier to drag down in some ways. It's a good trade-off. Also, Tactician is really good for a, a character with leadership abilities, like Martian Manhunter or Captain America, because they can grant re-rolls to teammates as part of their action, which is really good. Now, Banes, a lot of people don't want to do, which is a shame. He can start with lesser health. Uh, limited mobility is really good for a character like, say, Professor X, who can't get around very quickly. Uh, massive for someone like, say, Blockbuster or, um, oh, what's that colossal guy from Legion of Superheroes? I don't know. It makes them easier to hit. Unstable is actually another good one because it reduces your stats during the game, but uh, that's more for sort of like a character that is physically unstable rather than mentally unstable. So, uh, so like say Flux, bit of a deep cut there, but that'll do. Uh, I don't think I'm really going to give Lynx any of these because it doesn't really suit her character. So with five points left, I'm just going to sort of take the easy way out and give her five points of extra movement because your movement is based on, or your AP rather, your action point. Okay, so your action points are based on your strike and mind attributes, so that means she's already got nine action points. If I were to buy five points of extra movement to round out the character, that would be an additional five points that she can only use for movement, meaning the character is going to be really quick. So I think I'm going to do that. Extra move. Five. And there we go, I've got an 85 point character in a few minutes. Now I just need to work out her action points as we've already done. So she's going to have AP of 9 with 5 additional for movement only. Uh, a lot of people worry about buying extra move as a power thinking you can only use it to walk around. Basically anything that's not an attack 
it counts as movement. So interacting with an object, which you need to do in some missions, attempting an escape role, all those sort of things uh, move. So having the extra movement's always quite useful, especially if you want a character who's not gonna get pinned down too easily. And your vitality is the lower of your strength or toughness, plus resolve. So she's got strength four, toughness four, that's fine, plus resolve, so she's gonna have a vitality of eight, which for a normal human is pretty good. And there we go. Now she, I just need to type this up, make it a bit neater. I do nice little printed ones, and she's ready for a game. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps you out. Uh, if, you need, if you've got any more questions, follow the link in the comments to my blog. Send me a message. I'm happy to help you out. See you guys.